talking about arterial blood gases or ABGs. Um, it's going to take at least a couple of videos to explain this thoroughly because it's it's very entailed and it gets into a uh, it gets pretty in depth. Um, but in this video, I just want to talk about the main components to ABGs, and then in the next video, I'll talk about um, interpreting the results that we get from ABGs and how we can determine if it's metabolic or respiratory acidosis or alkalosis that we're looking at. So uh, first off, uh, ABG stands for arterial blood gases, so it's looking at the gases in the blood of an artery, and uh, usually they're drawn from an artery in the wrist, um, the radial artery. Sometimes they're drawn from a brachial artery or a femoral artery, um, but the point I'm trying to make here is that um, they're drawn from an artery and not a vein, um, so just keep that in mind. Um, and and there's there's four main components um, there, there's more than four components to ABGs but there's four main ones that I want to talk about and that's the pH um, the partial pressure of carbon dioxide the uh, bicarbonate level and the partial pressure of oxygen um, but first off kind of understand what ABGs are and what they're looking at um, inside your body you have electrolytes and you have acids and you have bases and and they all need to be balanced so the your electrolyte and your acid base balance is all all uh, controlled by two body systems okay and that's uh, and that's the well that was supposed to be a lung um, I guess the right one looks a little better here and then um, the lungs and the kidneys are what control uh, are what control the electrolyte and the acid base balance. So uh, you have the respiratory system and the renal system or the metabolic system. And, and those, like I said, are, are what control this, okay? Um, so let's start off with the pH. And uh, first off, a normal pH is 7.35 to 7.45. Anything less than 7.35 is considered an acid or acidosis. Anything more than 7.45 is considered an alkaline or a base, and that's considered acidosis. Okay, so when, when we get into the next video, um, pH is where we always start because it can tell us right away if it's acidosis or alkalosis, and then from there we can determine if it's metabolic or if it's respiratory. So, um, like I said, that's a normal value. Um, there normally are acids in the blood. Um, there's a number of different types of acids you'll find in the blood, and I don't know all of them, but I know you'll, you'll find carbonic acids in the blood, you'll find dietary acids, lactic acids, um, keto acids you find in the blood, and that's all normal to be there. Um, it, but there there's times when those acids accumulate for different reasons, and, um, and, that's, and that's what can throw someone into an acidosis of some type. Um, and then in the next video too, we'll talk about um, which system here corrects it first and uh, when the systems start working um, to correct either acidosis or alkalosis. But um, okay, so pH, I think uh, we, we understand for the most part here and I'll, we'll come back to this, we'll reference this a few times. Um, let's talk about the partial pressure of carbon dioxide. And let's start off, uh, well, first off, a normal value for uh, a partial pressure of carbon dioxide is 35 to 45. Okay, and maybe I'll write that down here, 35 to 45. Okay, so when a person breathes, they breathe in oxygen, and they breathe out carbon dioxide. And you probably know that. So uh, the faster or the, and the more deeply that a person breathes, um, the more carbon dioxide is going to be blown off. Okay, so um, what's, what's important to understand with the carbon, the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is its relationship to, uh, and, and let me write this, uh, carbon dioxide and the pH, um, and understand what the relationship is is between them and that is an inverse relationship okay um, they are they are inversely proportional so what that means is if the carbon dioxide level is increased the pH is going to be decreased and vice versa um, so if we come back up to our pH scale uh, over here we have an increased pH over here we have a decreased okay so if we have an increased pH over here we have a a decreased uh, partial pressure of carbon dioxide 
and if it's if the pH is decreased over here we're gonna have an increased uh, partial pressure of carbon dioxide and if if you ever studied chemistry you probably understand this pretty well because uh, carbon dioxide is actually an acid and uh, you know it, it makes sense you're gonna have an increased carbon dioxide over here because like I said it's an acid so um, so hopefully that helps make it a little easier to remember um, what else can I tell you about um, carbon dioxide just remember that carbon dioxide um, in the blood, the level of carbon dioxide in the blood is what triggers um, it triggers something in the brain, and I can't I uh, can't think of it offhand. Um, but there, it triggers something in the brain that um, that stimulates breathing. And when when the the amount of carbon dioxide level, uh, you know, it's gonna it's gonna keep going up until a until a patient starts breathing more to blow some of that CO2 off, okay? Um, and then once the level starts going down, um, the, the rate of breathing is going to decrease as well because you don't have as much carbon dioxide level, uh, or mu as much carbon dioxide to blow off. Um, so I think those are the main things I wanted to cover. And also, also remember, and this is just kind of a side note, but uh, patients who have COPD, Okay, the reason uh, it's it's such a well, there's other reasons too, um, but one reason it's it's a problem for them is because um, carbon dioxide in the blood is what tells a, a normal healthy person when to breathe. Uh, with COPD, it's ex actually the oxygen level that tells them uh, that triggers something in their brain to tell them to breathe. Um, so they're they're it's like they're wired completely opposite of us. Um, and, and I shouldn't say us, not everybody is normal and healthy, a number of people have COPD, um, but, but you, you get the idea of what I'm saying. Um, and, and this is also the, the reason that we can't have uh, someone who, who has COPD um, over, over uh, two liters of oxygen, just side note, but we're kind of getting off track. So, okay, let's go down to the bicarbonate uh, level here and uh, a normal bicarb is oh boy if I remember 22 to 26 I think yeah that sounds right to me um, and I'm sure it's different in every lab but the bicarbonate um, it's it's really it's a measure of uh, metabolic or the renal component of the acid base balance and um, understand the relationship between the bicarbonate level okay so we have well that's that's kind of big. Let's do HCO3. Uh, okay. Um, the relationship between the bicarbonate and the and the pH, um, it's it's directly proportional. Okay. So if the bicarbonate is increased, or if the pH is increased, the bicarb is increased, or if um, the pH is decreased, the bicarb is decreased. So if we go back up, back up here. Um, with an increased pH, we'd have an increased bicarb, and with a decreased pH, we'd have a decreased bicarb. Okay. Um, let's see. What else do I want to tell you about bicarbonate? Um, uh, maybe I'll, I'll get into more of the bicarbonate stuff in the next video. Um, I don't want it to get too confusing here. So uh, let's go on onto the partial pressure of oxygen. And a normal partial pressure, I think, is 80 to 100, 80 to 100, or 90 to 100? Um, let me think. I think it's 80 to 100. Yeah, no, it's 80 to 100. Uh, O2 saturation is 90 to 100, but of course we all know that. Um, OK, so uh, uh, PO2 is the partial pressure of oxygen, and what it's looking at is it's looking at the pressure or or the tension of the oxygen that's dissolved in the plasma, and um, there's a number of reasons uh, that the result could be decreased here, okay? Um, and let me give you some, some examples here. Um, and, oh, I thought my pen stopped working there for a second. We're okay. Um, the relationship that I can tell you with this one, with um, 
oxygen, and, and this is one that it's kind of implied, we kind of know this, um, if the oxygen, well, let's do it the same way we did the others, um, you have oxygen and then you have uh, carbon dioxide, and of course these have an inverse relationship. So if the oxygen is increased, carbon dioxide levels decreased, and vice versa. So if your um, if your carbon dioxide level here is increased, your oxygen is decreased. If your carbon uh, carbon dioxide level is decreased, your oxygen level is increased. Okay. Um, so so this and maybe maybe I'll just even copy this right onto the next video or I'll rewrite it either way um, but but this is what we're looking at okay these are the clinical findings that you find uh, in someone who has um, acidosis or alkalosis okay um, and they vary depending if it's respiratory or alkalosis or, uh, or respiratory or metabolic sorry um, and and we'll talk about that more in the next video but Anyway, uh, that's not where we're down here. Um, the the oxygen, um, the partial pressure of oxygen, partial pressure of carbon dioxide. We talked about the inverse relationship there. Um, what I was talking about before, though, was um, there's a number of reasons that this can be decreased, and I didn't want to get into this too much in this video, but since we're near the end, I think I will. Um, okay, so let me give you some examples that at least I can think of. I'm sure there's many more. I know in uh, pneumonia, it's common to have a decreased, uh, and I'm not going to write all of these, but it's common to have a decreased um, oxygen, or a partial pressure of oxygen, I should say, um, if, if your lungs go into some type of shock. Um, it's normal to have a decreased level. Um, congestive types of failure, uh, it's normal to have, have a decreased value. Um, People who have congenital, congenital heart disease um, will have a decreased value. And let me explain why this is. Um, okay, so this blue represents the vein. And, um, and if you took anatomy and physiology, you know that it doesn't really work this way. They don't connect so nicely. They go into these little things called capillaries, and they get and they uh, get really tiny and um, we couldn't even see them with the naked eye but let's just make things simple and um, and let's say we have you know we have our our oxygenated blood here and and we have our our uh, deoxygenated blood here um, what happens when people um, have have um, Oh, what was I talking about? Um, oh, uh, heart disease, like a congenital heart disease. Um, what happens is uh, this blood mixes prematurely, and because it mixes prematurely, you get too much. Um, you get uh, too much uh, carbon. Yeah, carbon dioxide. Okay, that's mixed in, and uh, remember we just talked about the relationship here. So because you get too much carbon dioxide, you're uh, oxygen level is decreased. So uh, there's many other reasons it can be decreased too, and maybe I'll talk about that more in the in the next video. But hopefully that gives you at least somewhat of an idea of what we're looking at here. So I think we covered just about everything I wanted to in this video. Um, like I said, in the next video we'll start talking about um, how you can determine if it's metabolic or respiratory acid.